Okay, guys, this is our uh, last notes before we get into taping. Uh, and we're going to look at the actual first aid kit that an athletic trainer carries. Uh, if we were still on campus, you would have spent some time actually building these and putting these together. Uh, but obviously, that's not going to be done this year. Okay. Um, so firstly, the importance of having a first aid kit uh, and having it fully stocked is you always want to have uh, anything that you need uh, available to you. So with medicine and uh, specifically emergency medicine, which kind of athletic trainer falls into, uh, you have to prepare for lots of eventualities that often never happen or rarely happen. So if what that means for the first aid kit means you need to have a lot of supplies and the vast majority of them you're not going to use very often. Um, but you always have to have them there just in case. Um, you want to have it well organized so that you can get to the correct equipment quickly. Uh, and you want it to be well set up so that you can quickly take inventory of what you have uh, and replace anything that gets used. Okay, so uh, this will be one of your assignments this week is coming up with a plan and a rationale for how many um, first aid kits we need. Okay, this is a, sim a simple uh, question, but it's it's quite complicated when you actually uh, think about it. Um, so our institution is Cerritos High School, uh, and I want you to think about you know how many kits we would need and how many we should use. Um, and I have a separate assignment sheet with some prompts for you to think about, but it depends on a few things like budget. You know, do we have the budget to produce? lots and lots of kits um, how many teams do we have are there any teams that share uh, should teams only have first aid kits when they're in season so like the fall sports have them and then they give them off to hand them off to the winter sports who hand them off to the spring sports do you need to take them to practice do you need to take them to just games um, there are a number of things to figure out and basically what you guys are going to be doing is coming up with uh, kind of an ideal, which would be basically having lots and lots of kits, multiple for each program, and then a realistic number of like, what's the fewest number of kits that we could have on campus um, that wouldn't affect our ability to take care of uh, the athletes on campus. Okay, so you'll have to come up with those two answers and then provide a written justification for your low number, you know, because the high number is just going to be going to give one to every single level of every single program. The low number is one that you have to think about. Okay. Um, checking before each event. So you should, and not everybody does, you should assess the contents of your first aid kit before you start any event okay because you want to make sure that everything is there um, what well organized uh, institutions do is they will have a checklist uh, inside that you have to check off that everything is there to sign off to say it is um, now when i worked as an emt in an ambulance this was the first thing that we did every shift is we would have a full page sheet with probably 60 items and I would have to go through and check off everything that was there. If anything was missing, I'd have to go grab it from the store cupboard uh, and restock. Um, now imagine the situation where you didn't do this and then you had to go and provide first aid in a situation only to find that you didn't have the equipment you need. Do you guys think that would be considered negligent? I would say absolutely and probably grossly negligent as well. So this is something that you need to do. Uh, for me, I'm kind of a nervous, anxious type of person and I like to know that everything is there. Uh, so checklists are really important uh, for me. They make me feel more comfortable going into a situation knowing that I have everything there. So like one example uh, from my EMT days is I would check the pregnancy kit every time I got in the ambulance and you know in five years i didn't deliver any babies and nobody in my uh 
company delivered any babies in that five year span. But for me still, I would go and uh, check it every time because I wanted to make sure it was there just in case. Okay, so the this is a basic first aid kit. Uh, I'm not just gonna read it all to you because that would be boring. Um, I will, in one of your assignments, have this all written out for you so you can go back and check and see. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And just remember, this is the basic kit. Okay, so you can put a whole lot more uh, supplies in a full first aid kit. Uh, one of your assignments this week will be to look at each individual item and explain why it is there. Okay, like why do we carry antibiotic cream? Okay, we carry antibiotic cream. Okay, somebody has a laceration and it's got dirty, um, you know, if they're playing you know, like football and they cut their hand or their arm and they landed in the mud and, you know, you want to clean it and put antibiotic cream on it before you um, bandage over it. Okay. So that would be the reason why it's there. Uh, and you need to go through each item in the basic kit and explain what it is there for. I think this is a really good exercise so you can kind of see a range of the situations that you might have to deal with. Okay. Um, now, we talked about having a checklist, um, but really the equipment should be checked at the end of your shift as well as the beginning. Um, and it's best practice for you to replace anything you used at the end, because at that moment, it's really it's fresh in your, in your mind. You know what you've used during that event. And it's much easier for you to go, okay, I used a whole roll of tape. Let's go get another one and put it in. Then it is for the next person to pick up the bag and go through the checklist and go, oh, there's only seven rolls of tape. I need to go find another one. You're much more likely to miss stuff if you rely on doing it at the start of your shift uh, of work. So it's always difficult. You know, at the end of an event, you often just want to go home. But it's a really good pr uh, practice to make sure that you restock the bag uh, at the end. And plus, that's just uh, a nice thing to do for the next person coming in. Uh, we would always have that uh, as kind of best practice in the ambulance is you would want to leave the ambulance in the state that you want to find it so that when you come on shift, everything is ready and you can go straight into, because sometimes, you know, you get an emergency call 30 seconds after clocking in and if you have to kind of run around and go through and check everything off, that could delay you five minutes. Okay, so you always want to kind of make sure everything is left stocked up. Okay, uh, that checklist isn't the only paperwork. Um, there is some other paperwork that goes into a first aid kit. And this will be your other, your last assignment this week is to produce an injury report form. Um, basically, a lot of these forms are there to document what happened and what you did. And sometimes people feel nervous about putting that information down there in a record. But the whole point is to protect you so that you can demonstrate this is what happened. I did the right thing uh, in case anybody wants to question your, um, you know, what you did. Okay, so the paperwork's really important. And this is kind of a summary of what is in there. First thing is an injury report, and that kind of explains what happened, who was there, uh, what injury presented, when did it happen, uh, who was involved, was there any fault uh, in what happened, or was it an accident? Uh, the next thing is a treatment record, which is where you document what treatment was provided, uh, and you can also, in this case, document what treatment was accepted or what treatment wasn't accepted. Sometimes people don't want you to treat them. And we used to have that in the ambulance and would have them sign uh, a waiver form if they rejected the treatment that we tried to provide. Um, now, you guys aren't going to be athletic trainers next year, but uh, is, especially if you work football games, you'll be working alongside uh, trained athletic trainers. Uh, they will have their own reports, which will cover much of what happens in injury and treatment, but it will also include recommendations for follow-up treatment, for potentially going to physical therapy, to go see a doctor, or return to play. So the athletic trainer in their report will make uh, an assessment of what they think is a reasonable time 
uh, for rest before return to activity. Similarly, if there is a physician on site, which there, there is when we have um, the, the football home football games or any football games, we have a physician that travels, uh, that goes to our games, um, they will produce a similar report. And the, you know, what that report does is it provides the information for if that they are passing them off. So say someone broke their arm and is going to the emergency room. The physician would write a report so that the receiving doctor in the ER who's treating the broken arm has uh, the report of what the physician on site uh, did, what they saw and how it happened. Okay, it's a really important part of healthcare is passing information off uh, because it never happens in healthcare that one person treats is one person is treated by just one healthcare professional. So normally, like if you think about, you know, that broken arm example, treated by an athletic trainer and physician on site, picked up by a paramedic who will generate their own report, all of that will be handed off to a triage nurse in the ER, then a doctor in the ER, maybe handed off to another doctor and nurse if they have shift change, then handed off to like maybe if they're going to have an operation to reset the arm, handing off to the OR team. Uh, and then that gets handed off to recovery, handed off to rehabilitation, and then handed off again to uh, a primary care physician who might follow up in three months, six months, or an orthopedic specialist. So you can see that there's a lot of people involved and generating these reports helps make sure that all the information is passed down the train and that the athlete or the injured person is treated uh, effectively. The last thing uh, that's listed is a head injury and concussion information. Uh, often what happens with concussions is they don't always present immediately. And if somebody gets hit in the head, they might feel all right in the moment and then deteriorate one hour, two hours, six hours later. So typically what happens when we have a suspected concussion is that form of information is given to the athlete and a parent if they are a minor so that they can kind of uh, be aware of any symptoms that might develop in the next couple of hours and what would need intervention. Um, so some like an example of one of those things is if uh, the patient with a suspected injury uh, starts to feel nauseous or shows you know actual vomiting later post injury, that's a sign that uh, the concussion is there and it's more serious. Uh, so then, you know, that information would be on the sheet. This happens to the patient, they recognize it, and then they decide, okay, so we're presenting some symptoms, we should go to the doctor six hours later. Okay. Um, now, talking about the types of kit we have, um, you saw that the basic kit had quite a lot of stuff in it, and it's quite big. So the, the athletic trainer or for you guys who go into sports med too, you won't carry around like a big suitcase full of stuff all the time because uh, it's cumbersome, it's heavy. Um, what will happen is that will be stored in kind of a central location and then each athletic trainer will have their own personal mini bag. Okay, so the personal kit is stuff that needs to be used immediately or stuff that gets used um, a lot. Okay, so... The personal kit includes these items here. So an airway for rescue breath. So like if you uh, like a barrier mask that we used or the little mini masks with the tubes so that you don't have to run to the central location and come back to give rescue breaths. That one's always carried. Same with gloves for personal protection. Those are always in the personal kits so that you don't slow any treatment. You have it with you, you put the gloves on and you get to work. Uh, the other things are what other emergency items do we have here? So EpiPen, um, that's an emergency item. Glucose is an emergency item in a diabetic emergency. All of the other stuff though, Band-Aid, athletic tape, gauze pads, scissors, cream, uh, hand sanitizer, and uh, saline solution. All of that stuff is used quite regularly um, to clean wounds, to tape up injuries, um, and to bandage injury. So that stuff gets stored in the personal kit. So you have access to it immediately. So if you look at the two different ones, normally the personal kit 
is stored in one of those kind of um, fanny bags that you have that you can just kind of hold on the waist as opposed to a big, large uh, athletic trainer first aid kit. So it would be difficult to carry that around, whereas this one just sits on your hip. Okay. Um, now, the athletic trainer's bag has to be appropriate to the activity that they are supporting. Uh, and just here are some examples of some additional items that you would uh, add to kits depending on your sport or the event that's happening. Um, so cross country because it's outside and sometimes through uh, wooded areas, they include chamomile lotion for poison oak. Now that might not be such a big issue with where our cross country team runs, um, but you know across the country, cross country teams run in all kinds of uh, environments. Sunscreen as well because they're outside. Uh, for volleyball or basketball, things like um, lace up ankle supports. So those can be play, placed quickly and let the person get back in the game. Uh, finger splints for jammed fingers. Uh, those are common injuries, so you want to have those things available. Uh, for gymnastics, and this would be potentially for cheer as well, wrist supports because of a lot of uh, pressure they put on their wrists when they are, you know, handstands, cartwheels, flips, tumbles, uh, and then powder for holding on to equipment. Uh, swimming, though, so some of the things aren't even necessarily for first aid. Like swimming, like the kit should include razors because that's part of the swim culture is to uh, be clean shaven so that you can be as fast as possible. Uh, ear drops uh, for relieving pressure. And football, there's loads and loads of stuff. Like the football specific kit will be like three, four times the size of just the regular basic kit because you have lots of equipment because they're dealing with large team size. Uh, and the, you know, the amount of injuries we get in football is much higher. So those kits are much bigger, but some things are going to be extra splints, extra supports, knee braces, elbow braces, uh, all of that stuff is going to be included. One very specific thing for football is that there should be a helmet kit. To, uh, which includes, you know, hardware like uh, screwdrivers to remove parts of the um, the helmet, so you have access to the airway uh, without having to take the whole helmet off, which could compromise uh, next ability. Okay, uh, last thing is game day setup. Um, you have probably seen if you've been to one of our events in the last uh, year that uh, the sports med to. Uh, students set up in a, an area and these are some of the things that should be there now we don't always use these but um, it's always good to have a shaded area with an easy up especially for uh, you know outdoor events as a place where it could be cooler in the case of environmental injuries like uh, heat stroke heat exhaustion uh, a treatment table so that you can treat the person off the ground that makes it a lot more comfortable for the injured person you can have them sitting or lay down but also it makes it a lot more comfortable for the athletic trainer to be able to treat somebody at waist height rather than have to treat them on the ground. Uh, all of your supplies that aren't in the personal kit get stored there. Uh, communication devices so that you can contact administration, security, uh, 911, and have access to EMS. So there should be phones or walkies always present. Um, and then some other things like water or Gatorade, um, medical ice, uh, pre-packaged bags so that that can be placed and used quickly. Um, we don't include these things, um, but this is perhaps something that should be included. Uh, a gurney, backboard and crutches so that we could help move an injured athlete. All right, that's notes for this one. Um, I kind of explained some of the assignments you have for this week. Um, I'll also put those up. Um, in a Google Doc so that you can read them and uh, do those as well. All right, that's it for today.